What if Dale Earnhardt was still alive? This is the most asked question in NASCAR history, constantly inspiring people to ask what would have changed in the two decades since. Today, we look at a special point in a new one of these timelines and give NASCAR's greatest villain a hero's farewell. Welcome everyone to Volume 9 of Racing Infinity, and today we have another interesting what if. Here's the background info you need to know. The race is the 2003 Ford 400, a race that many claim to mark an end of an era in stock car racing. This of course being the final race of the regular points format, as well as the final race that Winston was the title sponsor of the NASCAR Cup Series. But in this scenario, Dale Earnhardt never died. Dale Earnhardt never died in 2001, and he is entering his final race as a full-time Cup Series driver. Earnhardt has also achieved four wins in the last three years, earning two wins in 2001, those being the Spring Atlanta race with a photo finish win over Jeff Gordon, as well as the inaugural Cup race at Chicagoland. His lone win in 2002 came at the track he became an icon at, Daytona, winning the Pepsi 400 in July. Now in 2003, the lone win on his retirement tour came at California Speedway in April. Kevin Harvick made his rookie debut in 2002 in a fourth RCR car with Sonic as the primary sponsor. For this race, he's driving a special Dale Earnhardt Wrangler throwback. Jeff Green is in the number 30 AOL Chevrolet, also for Richard Childress Racing. Ron Fellows has been driving the number one Pennzoil Chevrolet for DEI. That is because Dale Earnhardt had a deal put in place for Fellows to join the team in the Cup Series in 2002. Because Earnhardt is still alive, Fellows takes over the number one. As for Steve Park, he originally drove a fourth DEI car in 2002, but the Pocono crash he had sidelined him for the rest of 2002 and into 2003. Park is looking for a fresh start as he drove the majority of the season with Evernham driving the number 91 Mountain Dew Dodge as he decided to leave DEI but still on good terms as Park was just looking for a fresh start. Some quick info you need to know about this 2003 Ford 400. There will be 94 laps in this one, 49 cars have entered and 42 will race. Without further ado, let's take a look at the starting lineup for the 2003 Ford 400. Starting on the pole is Jimmy Johnson as he's had an impressive sophomore season, and starting in second is Rusty Wallace in the number 2 Miller Lite Dodge. Dalen Hart Jr., known as Little E, will roll off in third, and Tony Stewart will start in fourth. Starting fifth is Jeff Gordon in that DuPont Chevrolet, and Ryan Newman will start in sixth. Starting seventh is Bill Elliott in that number nine Dodge Dealers Dodge. Rolling off eighth is the one who has already locked up the championship for 2003, that being Matt Kenseth. And there he is, the Intimidator, Dale Earnhardt, in his final full-time season, the final race for him, starting ninth in that number three car, looking for one final win. And then starting next to him in 10th is the 2000 champion, Bobby Labonte. Jamie McMurray will roll off 11th, and Brian Vickers, who will be a rookie next season, will start in 12th. He clinched the Bush Series championship yesterday. Mark Martin will start in 13th, and Terry Labonte will roll off in 14th. Starting 15th is Jeff Burton in the number 99, and Kevin Harvick in that special scheme will start 16th in the number 29. Jeremy Mayfield will start in 17th, and in 18th you'll find Johnny Benson. Starting 19th is Kurt Busch in the 97, and starting 20th is Casey Mears, finishing off his rookie campaign. Joe Nemechek, who took over for Jerry Nadeau after that scary crash at Richmond, will start 21st. And Ward Burden, he'll be driving this car full-time next season. He'll start 22nd. Elliott Sadler in that M&M's Ford will roll off 23rd. And next to him is Robbie Gordon in a 31 for Richard Childress. Ricky Craven, the winner of that infamous Darlington finish earlier this season, will start in 25th. And Greg Biffle, who's capped off a successful rookie season, will start 26th. Kenny Wallace will start in 27th. 
and Sterling Marlin will start 28th. Starting 29th is Kyle Petty in the 45 and Steve Park. In that 91 card at 3rd Everham Dodge, he'll roll off 30th. Scott Wimmer, he's also prepping for a 2004 rookie campaign. In the number 22, he starts 31st, and Todd Bodine will start 32nd. Mike Skinner will start 33rd in that double zero for Michael Walter Bracing, and Ricky Rudd starts 34th. This next row is nothing but seven. So you have the seven of Jimmy Spencer starting 35th, and next to him in 36 is the 77 of Dave Blaney. Michael Walter will start in 37th, and Dale Jarrett will start 38th. Tony Raines in the number 74 will start 39th, and Ron Fellows looking to improve, he starts 40th. And then rounding out the field is Ken Schrader in the 49 for Bam Racing and John Andretti in the number 43. He drove this car for the entire 2003 season. And the unfortunate ones that failed to qualify, Mike Wallace, Kevin LePage, Larry Foyt, Jeff Green, a very shocking one, Christian Fittipaldi, Derek Cope, and Ron Hornaday Jr. Jimmy Johnson and Rusty Wallace leading the field of 42 cars in a race that will mark the end of an era in NASCAR, but the beginning of a new one in February. Pace car down pit road, and here we go. For the final time in 2003, we're underway at Homestead. Jeff Gordon gets to that inside line with Dale Earnhardt behind him. Will we see one last fun battle between these two today? Jeff Gordon is up to second now, but he's being challenged by Ryan Newman. Ryan Newman in that number 12 all tell Dodge. He's going to get by Gordon, and he's going to take second away. Ryan Newman, he is called the Rocket for a reason as he's going to rocket past Jimmy Johnson for the lead here with just four laps in. Johnson is hung out to dry on that outside line as Jeff Gordon is back to second. And there's Little E, Dale Earnhardt Jr. He moves to third. We got another one on the move as Matt Kenseth, who's locked up the championship, is looking for more. He is going to take second from Gordon. Now 
Dale Earnhardt Jr. is working on Jeff Gordon as Tony Stewart and Dale Sr. chase them. Lots of action here early. Battle for the lead between Ryan Newman and Matt Kenseth. Stewart and Dale Jr. are battling for position, and Newman is going to hang on. Incredible racing we're seeing here. Fifteen laps in, and we have a new leader. That is the 17 of Matt Kenseth as he gets around Newman. Meanwhile, we see Dale Earnhardt. He's up to third now. Does he have one more win in him to cap off a legendary career? Ryan Newman is back at it again as he challenges Matt Kenseth. They're side by side, and hello, Newman. He will take the lead back as they head into turn three. One driver who's about to become a champion and another driver that could be a champion in the future. Neither of them backing down at all. And take a look at Kenseth going back to the inside of Newman and he's going to take the lead back. Twenty-one laps complete here at Homestead. Dale Sr. and Dale Jr. are running together in third and fourth. Both shared a special moment before the race as now Dale Jr. is battling his father for third place. Bill Elliott has now jumped into the picture in that nine car. Elliott and Earnhardt who have raced for many years together battling up front. As we see Bill Elliott now, he's up to third with Dale Jr., Jeff Gordon, and Dale Sr. behind him. Gordon is looking to put pressure on Jr., but meanwhile, it's still Ryan Newman leading with Matt Kenseth in second. And here are the first round of green flag pit stops. They have begun as Matt Kenseth, Ryan Newman, and many others begin to make their way down pit road. Kenseth may have come off pit road behind Newman, but it didn't take him long to get around him. 
Kenseth will assume the lead once green flag pit stops are complete. Things have mellowed out now as we're about a third of the way through. And oh, trouble! Turn three! Ron Fellows! He goes for a spin, smacks the wall in turn three. And it looks like he might have had contact with another car. I'm hearing it was the 74 of Tony Reigns as we take a look at the replay. Yeah, it looked like Reigns just drove in a little too hard to turn three and wiped out Fellows. Luckily, I'm hearing Fellows doesn't have a whole lot of damage and he is expected to continue. But what a tough way for Ron Fellows to end the season, especially this being uh, his friend and boss's final race. He wanted to make a good, good run here for Dale Earnhardt. Coming to the restart now, we had some shakeups. Ryan Newman now leads, Matt Kenseth is second, Jeff Gordon, Bill Elliott, and Rusty Wallace are your top five as we're back underway here at Homestead. Just like that, Matt Kenseth quickly gets back out in front, and Ryan Newman could be in some trouble here, and that is exactly what happens as he's now losing a few positions here. Can Ryan Newman bounce back and recover? Look at Dale Earnhardt. His car has come to life. And he gets to the inside of Matt Kenseth and to the lead for perhaps the last time, the Intimidator, Dale Earnhardt's out in front. Dale Earnhardt took the lead about eight laps ago, and now he is absolutely pulled away from the field out to almost a two-second lead over Matt Kenseth. We have not seen that at all in this entire race up until this point. I'm sure Dale is enjoying every moment of this with a smile on his face. Can he get one last win to add on to his career? Jimmy Johnson is currently second, Matt Kenseth there in third. Newman has worked his way back to fourth and Dale Jr. has slipped back a few spots. As up ahead you see Matt Kenseth and Ryan Newman. Newman stalking that number 17 of Kenseth. Of course Kenseth has the championship locked up. Newman is looking to the inside, Bill Elliott right behind them. If these two keep battling, Elliott will certainly have a shot at them to advance. Kenseth using that outside line really well, trying to keep Newman behind him, but here comes Newman as they come off turn four to the start and finish line. Newman will have the advantage. However, Dale Earnhardt's lead, man, it is just continuing to grow. One last hurrah for number three. 66 laps in, and now we are beginning the final round of green flag pit stops as some of the top 10 pit before the leader does. And 
Now here comes Dale Earnhardt. Just needs a simple, easygoing pit stop here. And if things stay green the rest of the way, he will most likely win this race. Green flag pit stops have cycled through and Dale Earnhardt continues to lead as he now has over a four second lead over Tony Stewart and Matt Kenseth. Coming to 10 laps to go, Earnhardt goes around Ron Fellows who had that wreck earlier putting him a lap down as Earnhardt is looking to go out on top. We got trouble with the 97 of Kurt Busch. His Rubbermaid Ford has gone up in smoke as he's trying to nurse his car back around. Uh, we're still green. Hopefully not a lot of fluids being put down. I don't know if we're going to have a caution or not, but Kurt Busch is going and he's trying to get his car back to pit road. And this is the flag Dale Earnhardt has been waiting to see. Final lap for Dale Earnhardt. I hope if you're watching at home, you have your eyes on the television as we are going to witness this for the final time. As Matt Kenseth has locked up the 2003 Winston Cup Championship, Dale Earnhardt will finish out his career as a winner, and he wins at Homestead. One last one for the Intimidator, and by the way, look who finished second. You couldn't have ended this story any better. Dale Earnhardt Jr. finishes second to his father. Almost feels like a passing of the torch moment. What a race. What a way to close out this era of stock car auto racing and begin a new one. Here's a look at your final results. Dale Earnhardt, your winner. Dale Earnhardt Jr. second. Jimmy Johnson in third. Tony Stewart fourth. Matt Kenseth, your 2003 champion in fifth. Ryan Newman sixth. Bill Elliott seventh. Kevin Harvick eighth. Jeff Gordon ninth. And Jeff Burton rounding out the top ten. And we look at the rest of the results. Michael Waltrip had a great bounce back from starting 37. He finishes in 12th. Tough day for Mark Martin with that 19th place finish. Brian Vickers finished in 21st. We're going to definitely keep our eyes on him next season. Greg Biffle finishing in 24th, you see there. Dave Blaney, 29th. And the rest of our results, Tony Raines in 31st. John Andretti, 34th. Steve Park, 35th. And tough break for Kurt Busch and Elliott Sattler, especially. Elliott Sattler DNF'd earlier in the race with a clutch issue. And that will wrap things up. And I must ask you, what do you think would have happened if Dale Earnhardt was still alive? It's a commonly asked question amongst NASCAR fans when it comes to a what if. What do you think NASCAR would look like? What would NASCAR look like even to this day? Would DEI still be around? Would Dale Earnhardt Jr. be a cup champion? I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Now with the historic Racing Infinity Volume 9 in the books, I'd like to look ahead to next time before we go. To commemorate Volume 10 of Racing Infinity, we're going to do something a bit different and unique to get you involved. Volume 10 of Racing Infinity will be built on the theme of fan favorites, with a poll being hosted for you the race fans to vote on a few aspects of the race. To begin with the theme, the first ever Fan Favorites volume of Racing Infinity will feature an exhibition NASCAR Cup race at a track that hasn't hosted the Cup Series before. You get to vote for which of five tracks will host the race. Iowa Speedway, the Milwaukee Mile, the Streets of Long Beach, a revival of Pikes Peak, or the Dirt at Eldora. The roster will feature the 2023 All-Star Race participants, as well as Jimmy Johnson and Chicago winner Shane Van Gisbergen. With that being said, four more slots remain for the race, and you get to decide from a ballot who gets in, with three retired stars and one guest driver from another racing series appearing. Finally, you'll also get to vote from a few different options for the race format, including a single standard race, heat racing for a limited field, or the SRX style, where there's two full field heat races and then the main. 
For Volume 10, the fans get to decide what they want to see. So be sure to click on the link in the description down below to vote. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you all vote for. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Gray Speed Productions, and I will see you in the next video.